My name is Devin Rajkumar. I am a Toronto-based chef, but I've been spending the last several years traveling around the world, cooking in different countries, across different continents, sharing what I know, but for me, most importantly, learning and absorbing as much as I can about the cultures and traditions of the places that I visit. Love for cooking started with my grandmother, who is from Mahaika as well. And I started cooking with her on the floor of her apartment, where she would take two stones, rub them together, and produce coconut choka, which is really what started my love for food. From there, simple things like tennis roll, cheese, and pepper sauce, and then she would make for me, I couldn't cook at that time as a kid, but she would make for me different things like hasa curry, gilbaka curry, chicken curry, and roti, and all these beautiful delicacies that I love so much these days. But my love for cooking really started with her. And then as I grew older, I learned that I could take care of people and nurture people the way that my mother and grandmother nurtured me through cooking. And it really took off from there uh, when I decided to go to culinary school and become, and, and you know, pursue becoming a professional chef. As a Guyanese going to culinary school, and the culinary school in Toronto, Canada, where I went, there's a lot of French classical technique that we learned. Fortunately for me, having been raised in Toronto, Toronto, very similar to New York, is like a melting pot, where you get a lot of different cultures. So although I was raised Guyanese in a Guyanese household, I was raised with a lot of different foods around the world. And to this day, I consider myself a world-inspired chef whose mission is to showcase and modernize East and West Indian cuisine. And here you have it, Guyanese chicken curry on a bed of beautiful chow mein, step by step. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to bring this to you. Whenever I decide to cook Creole type dishes, uh, I will usually lean on my mother. So on the page, we've done a beautiful dal recipe. We've done chicken chow mein. And one of my favorite things that my mom cooks is bacon saltfish, which we did together. But my signature dishes are world inspired. Um, so I love making a beautiful mac and cheese. But when I make my mac and cheese, I usually do some, some spins on it, a jerk chicken mac and cheese. And it's done with a little bit of finesse. It's done using a bechamel sauce, which is one of the mother sauces that I learned in culinary school and I take great pride in the presentation and the garnishing of the dish. Another one of my signature dishes is an eggplant parmesan. My mother's a vegetarian, so I've always taken vegetarian food very seriously. So the whole process of salting the eggplant and breading it and frying it and then layering it and using beautiful buffalo mozzarella and artisanal ingredients, I take things very seriously when I cook. Um, some of the signature dishes that I've been doing a lot recently when I do my restaurant collaborations and pop-ups around the world is pepper pot. And I love taking that ingredient and doing cool things with it. Taking West Indian food, taking specifically Guyanese food and showcasing it throughout the different things that I do, like, like putting it on my Instagram channel, like putting it on YouTube or Facebook. The response has been excellent. The hardest thing about being a chef is these are very long hours that chefs work. Now I've worked in different restaurants and I've ran different restaurants. I've owned restaurants in the past. The hardest thing is the long hours and you're on your feet all day and you're working in a very hot environment. You're bending over a lot to go into the fridge or to pick up big boxes of potatoes. It's a very physically demanding profession. Also mentally, if I'm cooking for a few hundred people for a catering or if I have a tasting menu for 20 people and I have 15 items on the menu, it's a lot to remember. And a chef and an executive chef must be someone who can lead the team and lead the brigade. So you're not just looking after yourself, you're looking after everybody. Physically and mentally, it's a very difficult thing. And what pushes me forward is my passion for the craft. Now, I go and speak at a lot of different functions. Uh, a lot, I've been spoken on panels this year and last year, and I go into a lot of schools and do cooking demonstrations, and I often get asked the question, Chef, Dev, what would you offer as advice to someone who may want to follow in your footsteps or someone that may want to pursue a career in cooking? And first and foremost, the passion has to speak, because if I wasn't passionate about what I would do, 
the long hours, the sleepless nights, the burns all over myself when I have to go into work and continue the next day, I wouldn't be able to push through without passion. Also, nothing comes overnight. You know, all these television spots that I get and traveling around the world and cooking, this didn't happen overnight. I've been working at this for over 10 years and I've dedicated all my time to it. I really have been committed to the cause. So things don't happen overnight. So you must work hard and continue to work hard. Passion has to come through and be yourself.